Hey, welcome back. Today I want to talk about another couple of tech tips that can save you money. Because, well, that's largely what I'm always about is I'm a cheap guy and I like to save money and I want to see you save some money. So today we're going to talk about how to save some money on car batteries. Well, as you can see, we've got a rather old vehicle here. This is one of mine. And this battery, we don't even know how old it is. But you know what? It still works because on an older vehicle like this, there's no parasitic draws. So as you can see, it's still hooked up. And I can safely do that with an older vehicle like this because when it's turned off, there's nothing drawing power. If you got a newer vehicle, you might have a problem with that. This one though, well, because of its age, nothing is running, absolutely nothing. And uh, as a result, the battery's still good. And uh, well, follow this along though, because there's some things I'm gonna tell you here that can well, save you an awful lot of money, hundreds of dollars, so you don't have to keep buying new batteries all the time, because if you properly care for them and do just a couple little things, that uh, they can save you a bundle of money. And uh, well, I'm going to show you one right now. One of the things that I've got, and I've actually got a couple of them, this is just one. This isn't the one that's installed in this vehicle right now. It's actually another one about half this size in there. And uh, it's got a cord on it. It's a solar panel with a cord on it that just plugs into your lighter outlet or your power point, whatever you have in your vehicle. In this case, it's an actual cigarette lighter, older vehicles. And what it does is you just lay it on the dash, plug it in your lighter, and the whole time it's laying there, it's charging your battery. Well, not a lot, but it keeps it from going down. Because um, unattended, over time, uh, even if there's nothing drawing power, batteries will go down over time. And this one here, this battery has been sitting here now for four, five years. I can't remember. I've lost track, actually. It's been that long. But this battery has, in fact, been sitting here in this vehicle for at least five, four years, maybe five, I think. I think it's five. And we don't even know how old it was before that. It's too dirty, can't read the label, so I don't have no idea what year it is. I suppose if I cleaned it off, I could, but I, I'm not gonna bother with that doesn't matter this thing has been sitting idle for five years okay and typically uh, a battery will once it gets uh, well when a battery sits they lose charge anyhow it's a natural part of what a battery does which leads to a lot of myths and I'm going to talk about a couple of those too is a lot of people figure oh you cannot leave a battery on a cement floor or it will discharge it that is an old myth that is older than I am I don't know how that one ever got started. Well, actually I do. Because many, many, many years ago, before I was even born, battery cases were made out of different material that were just slightly conductive. And if you left your battery sitting on a concrete floor, it would in fact discharge it. Uh, that has not been true for a long, long time. And yet for some reason, it's still one of those myths going around that people still believe they think if your battery's on a cement floor, it goes dead, and you know, Bob will say, hey, my battery was on a cement floor and it went dead. Bob forgets that his battery was sitting on that cement floor for over a year. And on over a year, a battery goes dead on its own. It doesn't need anything. And that's where one of these things comes in handy. I'm gonna show you something on this vehicle. Like I said, it's been sitting for five years. I haven't turned a key on it. Uh, actually, the fuel tank's not even hooked up, long story. Uh, we don't even know how old this battery is, but because we use one of these things, just in case we need some interior lights or whatever in it, because we store stuff in it, it's a, uh, it used to be a school bus. We store stuff in it now and that we need access to on a regular basis. And just in case we need some lights or something, well, I want a battery that's not dead. So we got one of these in there, about half this size plugged in, and well, that keeps it alive. And how does it do that? Well, just the tiniest little bit of a charge compensates for what a battery would normally lose anyhow. And so 
we got a fully charged battery. You know, I'm going to show you here right away. You're not going to believe this. This battery, like I said, haven't turned the key in this thing probably five years. Watch this. Uh, just for the record, uh, it's not just one light. Every light on this vehicle works. All the park lights were on, both headlights, all the tail lights. It's got marker lights on top of it. Everything worked because of that little solar panel. Five years it's been sitting with that little solar panel on it. And it saved that battery. And another way that it saves a battery, and that's why these things are... These things are a great investment, in my opinion. I don't know how much they cost. Uh, I kind of just acquired these ones. I got two of them. And uh, the way it can save you a pile of money is batteries, you know, and th this would apply to if you happen to be inclined to leave a battery sit for any period of time in your RV or your boat or whatever. Actually, for those vehicles, I would recommend taking them inside because what happens uh, when a battery is not fully charged, it'll freeze. Now, those of you in warm climates where it seldom glows below freezing, you don't have to worry about this. But if you're like me and you live somewhere that gets minus 30, minus 40, uh, you're going to want something to keep that battery from freezing. Because the minute it freezes, if it's not fully charged, it will freeze. And if it does freeze, it'll destroy it internally and you'll be buying a new battery. Now, this vehicle is not worth buying a new battery for, so I really don't want to do that. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do something to extend the life of this one. So I put one of those little solar chargers on it. And guess what? Five years later, this battery is still good. And you just saw the lights come on. And that, like I said, that's not just one of them. That was all of them. All the lights come on. So, you know, that's one of the things that uh, keeping a battery fully charged, uh, there's actually a couple of reasons for that aside from the freezing thing, because once they get below a certain charge, depending on the temperature, uh, the, the less charge there is, the, uh, the less cold it takes to freeze them. And when it freezes, the, the electrolyte expands and starts breaking things internally. It just destroys the battery, turns it into garbage in a hurry. The other thing that happens in a battery that's not fully charged is uh, you leave a battery sit dead for any length of time even when it's not below freezing and it will pretty soon turn to junk too because the plates will start to deteriorate because it is an acid in the electrolyte and without an electrical charge in there to keep all the material on the plates it'll fall off and fall to the bottom and well, short out the cells and basically your battery turns to garbage. Now, there's a couple of ways of taking care of things like that. Well, one is, like I said, the solar charger. Another one is <clears throat> um, a small battery charger we refer to as a trickle charger. I don't know if you can even buy them anymore. I haven't seen them in a long time. But they're only like about two amp output. And you can actually mount them under the hood, uh, hook them up to the battery permanently. And in the case of vehicles, I don't see the cord hanging out of this one. I assume it has a block heater. Almost everything in this country has a block heater. And uh, you tie it into your block heater. So when you plug your car in, it charges you, keeps your battery fully charged, which also, by the way, in the wintertime, keeps it warmer. And the warmer it is, uh, the more it can release for energy, for cranking. So uh, a warm battery actually gives you better starting. Actually, a little tip, uh, another little trick is... Uh, if you don't happen to have a set of booster cables or another vehicle handy to boost you and you don't have a charger or can't wait for the battery to be charged up, a little trick, you can take the battery out of your vehicle, take it into the house, uh, this is on the real cold days of course, and uh, throw it in a sink of warm water. Not too hot, I don't think you'd want to warm it up too quick, but I have done this uh, on a number of occasions and uh, in a pinch. Uh, you warm it up, you can just keep putting your hand on it, even in the water, if you put your hand tight against the battery, you'll feel how cold it is. And in the warm water, you just keep changing the water, because that thing's like a giant ice cup cube, it'll cool the water off. You just keep warming that water up until that battery is room temperature sort of thing. You take it out, drop it in the car, and you'll be surprised, it'll start like the middle of summer. 
But uh, if you've got a newer vehicle that uh, has, well, remote start security systems and onboard computers that have all kinds of parasitic draws in them, there's a lot of different things that can be drawn power, believe me. I have another one, and it has cost me a few batteries before I got smart. I knew better, but even in warmer weather, when I wasn't driving it, uh, the parasitic draws would suck the battery down, and once it ended up dead, didn't matter how much I recharged it, it was junk. Next winter, when I went to use it, as soon as it got cold, it couldn't start my car anymore, and I had to buy a new one. I've had to do that twice now. But I've gotten smart because I know better, but I was just a little lazy because one of the things you can do if your vehicle is sitting for a period of time is uh, disconnect the battery cables. And then, well, it can't kill your battery if it's not hooked up. And that's what I should have been doing. And because uh, for the length of time it was sitting and in the temperatures, even if it went down a tiny bit, it probably would have been fine. And it wouldn't have hurt it, but because there was parasitic draws, it killed its stone dead and turned the battery into garbage. But I'm going to take you over to that vehicle. I'm going to show you what I ended up doing because I was a little lazy. I didn't want to have to undo the cables all the time because that required opening the hood and using wrenches and messing around. And it just seemed like a lot of work. So I come up with an idea that uh, well, actually it didn't cost me a darn thing because somebody gave it to me. But I'm going to show it to you in a second here. Okay, this is the other vehicle I was talking about. Slightly newer, not real new by a lot of people's standards, but it's new enough, it's got a computer in it. And uh, this is the third battery I've had to put in this car now before I finally got smart. Because I didn't feel like unhooking and hooking up a battery cable all the time. And somebody was kind enough to give me this item. Right here. <coughs> This is something that I would encourage people to buy if they got a vehicle of this vintage. Now, if you got a really new one, you don't want to be disconnecting the battery. I'll get into that in a second. But on this one, rather than undoing the cable, this acts like a switch. It's a little green knob. If you turn it down, it tightens it up, and the vehicle comes alive. I just unscrew it like that, and now there's no power to anything, and the battery uh, I made sure I put a charger on it overnight so it was topped right up uh, before I left it sit. I disconnected it at that point. At any given time, if I need to use this vehicle, I just open the hood, turn that down, no tools needed. We got power ready to go. Now, if you happen to have a fairly new vehicle, some of them are very, very fussy about... Uh, Having the battery disconnected, it can actually really mess up the computer on them, on some of them. On ones of this vintage, not a problem. They don't care. In fact, all that happens is your check engine light goes off for a while. If the problem still persists, it comes back on. But we won't, we're not into that right now. Uh, with vehicles of this age, though, the older ones, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, one other option you can do is, again, uh, if you don't want to disconnect your battery, uh, using that little solar panel. If I had this thing parked facing the right direction, I could just throw it on the dash and plug it into the power point, and it would keep the battery topped up. But for this one, rather than deal with that, make sure it's pointing the right direction and hope that the solar panel puts out enough to keep up with all the junk that's going on in this thing. Too much. Well, that's why we put in the disconnect. But like I said, if you've got a newer vehicle, though, some of the newer ones, you can't do that. It messes with the computer. So you can't disconnect your battery. That's not an option. But your options with those ones are, is again, the solar panel, if you've got a big enough one. They'll keep the battery topped up, because on some of them, apparently, there's enough parasitic draw that your battery will go dead within a month. Something like that, if you're not driving it regular. And I have a few vehicles, so... I'd, I'd switch back and forth, and uh, sometimes they will sit for up to six months, as this one will. Uh, it's four-wheel drive, so I don't bother driving it in the summer, don't need it, but when we get nasty snow drifts across the roads, it, yeah, we need it, so we drive it in the wintertime. But during the summertime, even though it's warm out, we still actually have to disconnect the battery where you end up dead and end up buying new batteries over 
and over. And in the length of this car, like I said, uh, that's the third battery now. And uh, over 100 bucks a pop for batteries. Well, that's what I said. I'm trying to save you some money here by not making the mistakes that I've made. Even though I know better. Because I, I know this stuff. I know that dead batteries freeze. I know that dead batteries deteriorate. I know that bat batteries will go dead over time. So don't let them... Don't let don't leave a battery sitting dead. You know, if your bat you know, especially in the winter time when it's really cold, if you have to live somewhere it gets well below freezing, uh, if that battery is dead for even a day, that can be enough to destroy it and make it totally worthless. So don't leave a vehicle sitting uh, before you go to work and to take a cab or get a ride or whatever if your car won't start. Uh, put a charger on it and plug it in and let it charge while you're gone. Do not leave the battery dead. That's gonna cost you money. A lot more than a boost, let me tell you. A couple of tricks you can use with the newer ones, those, like I said, the, uh, the solar panel uh, or a small battery charger. Keep it topped up. If you need to change a battery, um, there are proper ways of doing it, and I won't even bother explaining it to you. I will simply say, if you don't already know how, it would be best to simply take it to a dealership or someplace that knows how to properly change a battery more than the newer vehicles. And an older one, it don't matter. It's not hard to do. On the newer ones, though, you actually have to connect alternative sources of power so that there's a power going to the computer at all times when you're changing the battery. You cannot simply disconnect it, throw another battery in, and hook it up. It's not that simple. But, like I said, newer vehicles, uh, the newer the vehicle, the bigger the problem. Uh, park for any length of time, the battery will go dead. You've got to do something to prevent it from freezing and deteriorating when it's dead. Or being dead when you need it. No good if it's dead when you need it. So, uh, like I said, battery chargers, uh, little solar chargers, those are options. On ones of this vintage, if it's a little bit older where it doesn't hurt to disconnect it, just put a disconnect right on the battery. That way you don't even need a wrench. You can just, if the thing sits for a while, just shut it off. Disconnect it all together and the battery won't go dead near as fast. may take quite a few months for it. Because even on their own, they will lose charge. But, you know, it will take quite a few months before it goes down enough that you got to worry about it. But, if you leave it hooked up, it might not take so long. In the case of the one I just showed you previously, there's no parasitic draw. Uh, the one that's parked over there, you can't see it's off camera. No parasitic draw on that one. I can leave the battery hooked up in that one. It can sit for six months. I get in it and start it like it was just running yesterday. This one, nope. I'll probably have to boost it if I don't disconnect the battery. Because it will have a dead battery. Guaranteed. So, uh, And those are things that uh, cost you money. Because you have to replace your battery unnecessarily. Because you didn't take some preventative measures. A couple other things I want to talk about that can save you a good chunk of money and uh, well, I don't know how much of this knowledge applies anymore because some of it's pretty old but uh, I knew a guy that was in the wholesale battery business and I asked him one time because I had a shop at the time and I was providing batteries to my customers and I asked him, I said, you know, what's the difference in quality between a six month warranty battery and a battery with a 24 month warranty? Surely that one that's 24 months is a better battery, isn't it? Nope. So well, what's the difference? The warranty. You're paying for the warranty. So it, most people don't keep their cars all that long, and if, especially if you're planning on selling the thing. Certainly do not buy an expensive battery for it. Be a complete waste of money. And, uh, you know, the... If you look after them, it's kind of hit and miss. Most batteries will last at least two years anyhow. And I have seen some last up to 10 years. But like I said, you know, you get ones with 48 month warranties and the well, fact is most people don't even have a car that long, so there's no point. In, and, and this is not a full replacement either. Those warranties are prorated. Well, I don't know how they do it now. It's a little different and I don't even ask. I just buy the battery and throw it in. I don't care because I know darn well by the time it quits, it's not going to be on warranty anyhow. But the way the warranties used to work, and I think they still work, they're prorated, which means that if halfway through your warranty period the battery fails, you are going to have to pay for half of that battery. They're only going to cover half the cost, so it's not that great of a warranty, really. You're still paying out. 
And at that rate, they're probably not losing a darn thing either. So don't think you're getting a good deal with a better warranty on your battery. Yes, boo? Cat making noise. Wants my attention, apparently. Anyhow, and uh, one thing that the a spec on batteries that, uh, yeah, I don't need you here to help me. I can do this video without your help. You know, really, I can't. Nice guy. Anyhow, uh, another thing that uh, one of the ratings that's just crazy is that um, they'll sell you batteries that have 1,000, 1,200 cold cranking apps, ridiculous claims like this, when in fact uh, an engine, well, V6 like this one here, 4 liter V6, probably only requires somewhere in the neighborhood of a 400 amps to turn that starter. So buying a battery that's 1,000 amps or 1,200 is really a waste of money. And in fact, it's actually a poorer battery. You don't realize it, but in order to get more cranking amps out of a battery, they have to put more plates in it. And because they're limited to the amount of space on most vehicles now, uh, that means the plates have to be smaller, which means that the durability isn't there and the longevity isn't going to be there. So a higher cranking amp battery is entirely unnecessary and it's probably not going to last as long. It's a marketing gimmick and it's going to get your money and you pay more for it. Now you'll see on this vehicle the batteries nestled in here. There's a there's stuff there and there's stuff there and well you got a little tiny bit of room this way and uh, not much. Basically you're limited to what you can put in there and in fact on this particular vehicle you even have to buy a battery that's specially designed for these vehicles because it's a slightly lower battery. It's about one inch lower than most batteries because otherwise it'd be hitting the hood. So and one of the things that they don't tell you on batteries now that I, I used to really like and I used to look because it was important to me. I always used to look at cold or not cold cranking amps, uh, amp hours or amp no what they call it uh well, it's been so long since they've seen it on a battery I forgot what it's called. It's reserve capacity, that's it. Reserve capacity. They used to rate reserve capacity on batteries and that's basically well simplified version is it tells you how long you can leave your headlights on before you kill your battery. I used to like buying batteries. I wasn't so concerned with the cranking apps because I knew that even a crappy battery far exceeds my needs. In fact, I used to buy batteries quite often that were smaller than what was supposed to be in the vehicle because I knew darn well I didn't need the bigger one. And I used to get into arguments with salesmen about that too. But yeah, you know what? I never had a problem. But the one thing I, I used to like is, uh, and it, you know, like I say, in newer vehicles like these, you're pretty much limited to what you can put in. You're going you're gonna to get what they sell you. They're going to say, this is the vehicle for your battery. Here you go. Goodbye. Well, it used to be there was a time when the battery compartment was a lot bigger. Well, even that one I just showed you, I could put a bigger battery in that one. And even that one is a pretty good size. And the vehicle behind the camera, uh, I don't, if I, I'd have to modify the battery tray, but... Uh, I think I have pretty much unlimited room in there, in that area. I don't think I could get a battery too big for that car. But, you know, and that's where, uh, you know, the, the reserve capacity was important. I remember one time, uh, years back, I, I bought this ridiculously huge battery for my little van. It only had a tiny little six cylinder in it, but uh, this battery was ridiculously huge. It had, a, I don't even know what the reserve capacity was. It was, it was massive. It was actually out of a Sammy. Was, that's what it was for. But I bought a brand new and I put it in that vehicle. And the reason I did that is because I know darn well that every once in a while I might forget something, I leave something turned on. And sure enough, I went shopping one day and I left my lights on. Three hours later, I come out. I walk over to the van and I'm like, oh, oh. Hopped in, turned the key, and that thing started like it had just been running. Not a problem. That's the advantage of the bigger batteries is you can leave stuff on. It also means you can crank for an awful lot longer if the engine is a little cantankerous and doesn't want to start right away. But they don't tell you that stuff anymore. They just tell you cranking apps, which are is completely irrelevant actually because it's always far, far in excess of what you are ever going to need. Even the biggest gas engines do not need over a thousand cold cranking apps. That's just 
totally unnecessary, but it markets. People buy it, they go, oh, big number, I like it, I'll buy it. Don't buy it. You don't need it. What you need is a reserve capacity, and that's a rating they don't even put on batteries anymore. They don't want people looking at that because it matters. It actually does, but they don't tell you about it. And when it comes to most vehicles nowadays, you couldn't put a bigger battery in if you wanted to anyhow. So, uh, other thing you can do to save money is uh, when you're buying a battery, shop around a little bit and, and find a decent price because uh, the fact of batteries is not unlike a lot of other things. There's actually very few manufacturers. A lot of different names, a lot of them. There's an awful lot of different names out there that you can buy a battery under. But there are, in fact, very few manufacturers. And despite the name on that battery, it could be brand X that also happens to manufacture 10 other brands. So even though you go to 10 different places and look at those 10 other brands, it's, you're actually looking at the exact same battery every time. And that's why I, I don't much concern myself with brand anymore because there are only a few brands and they're all very reputable companies that have been in business for a very long time. So uh, the odds of getting a crappy battery, pretty slim. Now, as with anything, you might get a dud every once in a while. It can happen. You know, that nothing's infallible. Most of the stuff's made by machines now, and they make mistakes. Well, so do workers, so do humans. So, I mean, every once in a while you can get a bad one, but you don't have to spend more to get a better one. You're not going to get a better one. You're just going to spend more, okay? So don't spend more, okay? Go out, shop around, and find the least expensive battery. It's probably made by the exact same company that makes the most expensive battery. So don't you know, save yourself some bucks. You know, don't be fooled by the prices. Don't be fooled by warranties. Don't be fooled by cold cranking apps. Just buy what you need. What you need and nothing more. And you can literally save yourself hundreds of dollars. Keep the battery charged up. Disconnect it when you're not using it. Put a charger on it of some kind to, so it doesn't deteriorate or freeze. And you can save yourself literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And that's my tip for today. Well, actually, that's quite a few tips, but it's all on one subject. Have a good day.